everybody. Zero one of your donkey stomper. Please take time to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're not already, guys. Uh, please take time to come over and join us on Patreon. We'd like to have you giveaways, perks, monthly giveaway over there. It won't be too much longer we'll have one. Or you can join our YouTube. And this is combined with Patreon. Alrighty, guys. I just thought you might want to see this. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make a jumper. We're going to make a tuned jumper. i done pretty well. got the lanes cut off because I know what they are. Because I just got through making the first one. Uh, it's over here. Let's see. On top of the box there. So. Let's see here. Let's make a jumper. What do you say? Let's see if I can get the camera to set here where we can see what's going on. I'll show you guys how I make a jumper. May not be the way everybody else does it, but that's okay. I ain't everybody else. All right, guys. First tool I got that made a world of difference is a stripper. It's come from DX Engineering. I use it for 213, okay? It's expensive, but it's worth every dime. You got a marker here, it's the first cut. Just take it, push it in as hard as you can and cut it. And I'll probably do something wrong since I'm on video because I ain't used to making this stuff on video. I don't know. I mean, it's still a little to it, but it's not. It makes it a lot easier. All right, you see, I still got a little bit of, a little bit of the coating, center coating around it. Pull it off. Probably should have done this first. And um, these are silver Teflon ends. That's all I use, the good ones. The Teflon, what it is, look here. Can't burn it. That's why I use them right there. See, it ain't hurt at all. All right. Now, it would be a good idea, don't forget to put your reducer on there because I know I didn't have to on the first end, but if you don't put it on there, you'll forget. And then you forget, and then you know you are with no reducer. All right, then you got the other side of this. It says second cut. Like I said, this thing's, it don't say second cut, but it is second cut. This thing's expensive, but it's like 70 bucks. But it's worth every penny of it. Push it on there. Push it as hard as you can. Spin it. There you go. You got a perfect cut. In. I mean, what I like to do, you don't have to do this. Sometimes I didn't. I didn't. I didn't used to this at all. But I've been watching everybody. Just take just a little, not much, and just put on there. Just a little. Because if you put much on there, you can be in your way. Put just a little bit of solder on there just to get it flowing. I'm going to put much. You don't even really have to put none. But I've been adding a little just to kind of help it. Help it along. Help it suck it in there. It's about enough. All right. I'm gonna take my end. And you don't just cram it on there. You kind of screw it on there. If you cram it on there, you'll end up with a short. And you gotta kind of be careful. Don't screw that on there too far because you'll push your center out. But you can back it up and put it back in if you do. But I take my vice grip, so I just put just a little bit of twist on it, just a little pressure on that right there to make it go on there. Another good thing you can do is you can take your multimeter before you solder, just to make sure you got your jumper right. Take your multimeter, make sure it's not shorted. That way, if you got a higher piece of wire down there, you'll know it before you run your coax in. Then I just take and what I like to do is I take and put just a little solder right here first. And I won't do it a long time because you run it back in the ground, but I'll run it backwards one time. I run it down in there one time. Then I'll take and fill it in. Like so. Try to make it smooth off. 
And I always, a lot of people say, oh, you can't do it, you can get it on the side. I always do. It never fails. I always get just a little bit on the side. I'll show you that in a minute. So there's that in. Then I'm gonna take, solder my holes up. The first one's always kind of hard to solder because you gotta get it hot. Move all around. Which this is kind of hard too because it's hard to hold it. Just twist the coax. They make a holder for this too. They make a whole kit for all different coaxes. I'm gonna buy it one day if I ever get the money to waste. They're about $300 for the whole kit for all coaxes. It does RG, uh, RG393, it does RG Mini 8, it does uh, all them 317. You know, it's got all different size strippers and cutters. Dick's engineer says, sales, I'm gonna give you one of them. And you see, I got a little bit of lump right there on the end. And I probably got just a little flux or something on the thing because. Oh, I missed one hole. Get them on video. And get all them holes good and full. Like right, so, I missed another one. Well, I'm trying to get in a hurry. Where's the camera? There we go. Once you get it hot, it'll just start falling in there. But don't get too hot because you'll burn your. Uh, you burn through your phone when you burn through your phone then you have a shore but you got to be careful not to do this neither set a little piece of solder right there you don't get any threads neither which i've done here on video but i just take and hold it just a little bit screw it on past it when it does that and it'll be fine i got a little bit too much in there like i said guys I, of course i do it on video i'm going to goof up a little bit all right, you still got this right here, and you make sure you do not want to leave that too big because it'll stretch the coaxes and your radios, your amps, and all that. I just take a file. I don't get crazy filing all the way down through there. Just go around and make sure that, that tip's good and flat. See that piece right there? And I hate making jumpers. I charge 50 bucks a piece for these right here. Everybody says, well, that's too high. Well, that's fine. You don't have to pay me to make them. Buy your roll of coax and make them win. Showing you how right here. I ain't got time. That's why I charge so much. Because if I make them, it takes up time from building. You know, it's just, then it gets, time gets expensive. So say, so that looks pretty good right there. You gotta go look in. All right, now what I do is I just go over here and plug it in the analyzer. This one's gonna be really close because I done measured it. It may even be right on. So it's on the analyzer. It's just about perfect. On 28, that's where I like taking mine. I guess you want to tune them on 25, really. It don't really matter. Close enough. See, it's off just a little bit. You got a one, which that's fine. That's good, you can go. But I know this analyzer. All right, see so it zeroed out. Now, if you go, if you start coming back up, one number stop. That don't mean your jumper's ruined. In other words, if you clip it and X goes to two, you're still fine. You get X one or two and that close, you're good. I mean, we ain't gotta be that perfect. So let's make the other one. So there's your tuned jumper. Don't forget to put your coax end on. For your sleeve, I'm sorry. Screw it down the line. Take your stripper. <laughs> Go the first cut. But you're gonna push it in as tight as you can. Yeah. And then cut it. You can't adjust the blades. I had never adjusted mine. Mine may need to be adjusted just a little deeper. Because of the sometimes it don't get all the white off. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So it's got just a little bit on there, which that's, you can leave that amount on there, but I'll just peel it off a little bit. There you go. That's it. All right. Go to cut number two. This is 213, okay? It's my favorite coax. It's affordable, works good. 
it ain't supposed to but i've got guys running three six three thousands on on it uh, i've actually got a 213 jumper behind my 64 pill that holds but you don't want to get too long with 213 where it starts hurting you it's like if you go over 100 feet your loss is so much you don't want to do that really if you can help it because it does have a good loss to the guys it holds i actually had lmr 600 we was toasting it up, man. We was having terrible time with it. On a running 36, 3000s, 6000s. We tried to run LMR 600, me and Rabbit did. And uh, Rabbit said, I'm tired of this crap. I'm going to go back to 213. And I bought 393. I found lucky. Rabbit went back to 213. And he's running uh, about 5,000, 6,000 bird and 10 to 15 peak range. And, uh, it's holding. I know you ain't supposed to, but I'm telling you, it's holding. But he has a perfect SWR and don't have a reflex. That's part of it. So when you get a lot of, if you had 10,000 peak and 100 watt bird coming back, I bet you'd burn it up. He's got like 10,000 peak or 15,000 peak and, uh, you know, 10 watts tops coming back. So that's probably why he gets by with it. Like I said, when you do this right here, don't get too crazy because I'll, I'll probably do it right now. You'll push the, kind of watch it in here because you'll push that center up. All right. I just thought you guys might enjoy this. I've, I need to make a lot of videos. Uh, I got to make, I need to make some more tune-up videos for my radios. Uh, I need to make a video on everything I sell, really, on eBay. Like a video for it, but I ain't had time, guys. Some tractor pulling these boxes. I can fix and start a good time Charlie's, uh, I don't know. I may do a repair too, but I need to get back on Good Time Charlie's box too. But I don't want everybody to have to wait forever on repairs. So that's next on my list. Finish Good Time Charlie's and 64. Power supply. Finish up his box. Tune it. Test it. And then start that 48. Guys, I still got the 32 pill fat boy for sale too. Right now I'm just kind of filling in my holes. I hope this helps somebody make make their own jumpers because, like I said, I, I know I charge too much for them. I don't even really want to make them, guys. I ain't got time. But I do it just when I have to for certain people, for customers. Like I said, I charge $50 a piece for these. The longer ones, 75 You can buy a row of coax and make jumpers. I'm surprised. I don't know what that is generator i guess i really am surprised guys that nobody makes coax and just does that at all for a living i'm telling you if you had time somebody out there anybody that needs a job if you had time you could be the coax man and make money for a living just get all different kinds of coax just make coax and that's all you had to do and people buy jumpers and coax from you all the time there's a market for it. If you got patience and time. But I always end up splattering a little bit of rails and down there and stuff and making most of them threads up when I come up through there. Not bad, just a little. So, this is one of my jumpers, guys. Uh, I have good luck with them. Once in a while they go bad, like I've had them go bad on the workbench where I plug them in and out biggest thing that makes mine go bad is like when I put them in the radio and bend them over like this then they go bad after time when you bend them a lot put a lot of pressure on them usually, usually if you put them on and leave them they don't go bad but if you keep screwing with them all the time that's when you have one go bad on you unscrew them, screw them and so forth and a lot of people don't believe in filing them but it's so easy to leave one little piece on there and if you do what happens I'll show you this is the back of an amp. See, I use these push-on connectors. Right here, so I can do it quick like that. All right, see so how tight that is? You get a used amp that somebody's had a bunch of uh, coax ends in, and it don't fit in there, and they cram it in there. And when they do, they separate this. And when they separate that, that's like a springy metal. When they separate that, then there you go. 
you've got a, a, a loose end and then when you put mine in there it's right size it loose contact all my stuff's teflon i try to use guys these are all in the back of my box so they're teflon they won't weld i've got they're expensive but on ebay i've got barrels i've got teflon barrels and teflon elbows that won't melt. 10,000 watt rated. Coax ends the same way. And you ain't gonna melt them. I got just a little bit of solder splatter on it right then. So, yeah, I did, see? That's how easy it is to splatter it on there. But, uh, oh, yeah, before you solder it, guys, I always check it on your meter. I forgot that stuff. You get cocky after you do so many. And then you'll short one out and run a coax in. But, that's how I do it, guys. We'll go back here. We'll check this out. See how it turned out. On the analyzer. Zero. Let's go to channel 40. Still good. Let's go down to channel 1. Still good. Way on down there. Here it comes back up. See? But... That's the only way to make a jumper, guys. That's how you reflect. Everybody says, oh, I got reflected at the end of my box. Well, your tuning starts at your radio. You got to have a good jumper from your radio to your first box, to your driver. Then you can have a good jumper from your driver to this box. But then most people, if it's a good builder, a good builder will have your box tuned on his dummy load with matched jumpers. See, all my jumpers are made like this. So when I tune a box on a dummy load with these jumpers, that's what you're going to get. That's why you tune it on a dummy load too. You don't never tune a box on the antenna because it can be different. You tune it on a dummy load. That's what we use a dummy load for, that's why. But say if you run these jumpers like Good Time Charlie, he's running my jumpers and his LP is reading the same as mine because his coax is set up the same. Makes a difference, guys. Makes a difference. That's why you need to run you what they call tune jumpers because you want to get your system it's close to being right or your builder's system. Whoever builds your box, you want your system as close as you can to being like theirs because that's where they tuned your box. You don't want, uh, you know, if I tune your box on all screwed up jumpers, you're never going to be able to match that scenario. You're not going to be able to match the situation that I tuned your box in, if that makes any sense. But if you match your jumpers like I do, you got a good SWR, you'll have your box in the same scenario that it's on sitting here in my bench, and it'll work right for you. You never tune nothing in, um, never tune nothing in average. I never do. It's harder on transistors, harder on equipment, harder on power supplies, harder on everything. And don't even really help you talk no better. I tune everything in PEP, and I try to tune it modulated, and then, uh, and then I tune it. Like I'm, I tune it like you're going to talk on it. You know, so somebody says, well, tune it on deck key. Why would you tune a box on deck key? Do you talk on deck key? When you're shooting skip, are you shooting skip on a deck key and no idea? No. You're, to you're shooting skip on talking. So, that's my two cents for what it's worth. Anybody that tunes a box on average don't even need to be building. But, you know, that's everybody's, everybody's got their own thing. I like to tune a box on PP and see... Um, and see how much PP watts I can make and draw the less amps. I don't want to make the most average watts and draw the most amps. The more amps you draw, the higher your pills get, harder your power supply gets, hotter everything gets. And you still ain't going out to talk that high PP. All right, guys, that's enough of that. Pull the camera back down. That's a 20 minute video. Didn't mean to make it that long. Oh, well. All right, guys, please take time to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, guys. Uh, appreciate you. If this helps you at all, hit subscribe. Um, if you want to help support our channel, our videos, and our shop, and everything, our YouTube and Patreon, come over to our Patreon and join up. And uh, help support us. And there's giveaways for you and giveaways for everybody in Patreon. And the more people we get, the more dollars worth we give away every month. Plus, there's discounts on the work, discounts on box, on new prices, discounts on repairs. There's even the highest plan. It's expensive, but you can you can get one free repair a month. If you use a box trader, it'll be worth it. Um, and if you don't want to do that, you can welcome to subscribe to YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope this video is informative. I hope it helped you out, guys. Your friend, Jim, 018 Beavis, Donkey Stomper. Bye -bye.